sentence. I already ruined my life. That's 60. You want to go for 90? No. it. That's 90 more. That's 180. That's the rant. That's the horse. You do whatever the you want. Excuse me. My name is Mr. Green Man. I'm the federal witness of the United States federal government. I demand some respect, you. This is Antonio Rosales, and he stands accused of allegedly dragging a 10-year-old girl into a wooded area and committing acts of assault and rape against her. During the closing arguments presented by Assistant State Attorney Anna Valentini, an unexpected turn of events occurs when Rosales objects to the proceedings. He voices his objection through a translator and also expresses his disagreement through his actions. <laughs> Upon being referred to as a child molester, Rosales becomes irritated and vents his anger by damaging the innocent computer monitor. The deputies present in the court intervene and physically restrain Rosales, removing him from the courtroom. Following the legal proceedings, the jury reaches a verdict, finding Rosales guilty on all charges. As a result, he is handed down three life sentences as his punishment. This is William Demopoulos, an 18-year-old who is on probation for committing acts of vandalism, using a motor vehicle without permission, and obstructing justice. The probation hearing starts off on a difficult note when Judge Chris Green asks William to give his phone to his probation officer. However, William refuses and is even willing to sacrifice his freedom in order to keep his cell phone. The judge proceeds to explain the reasons why it is necessary for William to comply with the rules. On probation, your probation officer has a right to take anything they want to take of yours. If they want to search your phone, they search your phone. The problem is, you don't want to play by anybody's rules. You want to play by your own rules. The judge requests the officers to put handcuffs on the defendant, and as the deputies approach him, William realizes he is cornered and sees only one possible escape route. He makes a decision and takes it. As soon as William attempts to get off the table, the officers quickly and forcefully restrain him. In response to his actions, the judge decides to revoke his probation, adds charges of resisting arrest, and imposes a sentence of 40 days in jail. This is Alan McCarty who's been arrested and is currently facing charges after he made death threats towards a judge involved in a child custody case. The judge ruled unfavorably against McCarty, resulting in the loss of custody of his children. McCarty's erratic behavior towards the judge persists and carries over into his subsequent court appearances. My dad even went to the building and I look like a f***ing idiot, huh? Brought your dress today, you little f***ing prick. You wanna take my kids from me and act like that? You in that Shut the up! I'm trying to think over here. Now that McCarty has been convicted for the initial threats he made towards the judge, we can proceed to the phase of determining his sentence. Same. What a bunch of guys, you stupid piece of then also. You threatened my life. And yeah. You, you back room. Suck my No. I'm not standing. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. I'm just not standing up. I'm not standing. I don't have to stand. McCarty is relocated to a separate room where he can observe the court proceedings through a one-way glass. However, he persists in causing disruptions and disturbances. McCarty received a prison sentence of 20 years as part of his punishment. Additionally, the judge imposed an extra 10-day sentence specifically for his disruptive behavior within the courtroom. This is the story of Timothy DiMatteo, a 34-year-old rock musician from Florida. He has been accused of committing petty theft and causing damage to property. The allegations stem from an incident where he allegedly attempted to steal nutritional supplements and cause damage to nearby property after being apprehended. In a rather unconventional move, this rock star decides to entertain the court with a performance. 
to pick up my scripts. They say there's a 45 minute wait for some reason. I'm walking around shopping. I go to the bathroom to take a piss and wash my hands. And the manager's in there waiting for me, thinking I'm shoplifting. I wasn't shoplifting anything. No? No. My first, second, third, fourth, thirteenth, fourteenth amendment rights have been violated. However, the impromptu courtroom concert is abruptly halted, and DiMatteo is forcefully ejected from the courtroom. Later on, he pleads guilty to the charge of petty theft and is ordered to pay a fine of $293 as part of his sentence. This is Joshua Martinez, who is facing charges of driving with a suspended driver's license and made the decision to represent himself in court. Martinez, displaying a certain level of familiarity with the law, took the opportunity to question the judge and delve into legal intricacies. Uh, uh, injured party or damage to property here? It's charged brought by the city of Las Vegas, sir. Okay, so the city's the, the victim in the case? The city is the, yes, victim? the charging party. So they're the victim. As Martinez attempted to be clever and question the judge's authority, it became evident that the judge had reached her limit. She asserted her dominance within the courtroom to maintain control of the proceedings. In charge this of this courtroom court? and you're going to stop no, it? we are in charge of the courtroom. The judge, aiming to establish her authority and remind Martinez of who was in charge, made the decision to have him removed from the courtroom. Contempt of court. You are in contempt. 20 minutes later, Martinez was brought back to the courtroom in order to apologize for his direct contempt of court. However, Martinez remained steadfast and unyielding. Consequently, he received a sentence of 15 days in jail for contempt of court. Subsequently, his original charge of driving without a license was dismissed. This is Milton Watts, a 21-year-old, surrendered himself to authorities after a warrant was issued for his arrest due to his failure to appear in court for a domestic violence charge. When Watts arrived at the courtroom, he did not have legal representation and hoped to represent himself despite lacking knowledge of the law. Judge Chris Green, who has become quite popular, decided to give him a chance and asked him if he understood the concept of a bond. I don't really give a to be honest with you. That's going to cost you 30 days in the county jail for contempt, $5,000 cash surety bond, temporary, subject to the temporary protection. Unfortunately, Watts had already placed himself in a difficult situation, facing a bond worth $5,000 and a potential 30-day jail term. However, he continued to worsen his position through his actions. I already ruined my life. That's 60. You want to go for 90? That's 90 more. That's 180. That's 306. I'm working at McDonald's. Now I got to come here and my life up. you. No, and stop. How many days you want to give me now? Are you sure county? Yeah, I'm at about a year right now in contempt, so. Despite Judge Green initially considering a 360-day sentence due to the incident's intensity, he ultimately settled on a 90-day jail sentence for Milton. This is Daryl Brooks, a convicted individual responsible for a tragic incident where he drove his SUV into a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin, resulting in the deaths of six people and numerous injuries. Reports indicate that Brooks intentionally carried out this act, reaching speeds of over 30 miles per hour during his reckless driving. Through 68 different people, he kept going until he got to the end, and there was no more bodies to hit. It was intentional. Following his arrest and charges, Brooks made the decision to represent himself in court. You are allowed to represent yourself in this case, sir. You will not have attorneys assisting you. They're gone from this case. Do you understand that? I think I will probably be better served representing myself. Throughout the trial, Brooks repeatedly disrupted proceedings and had several outbursts, leading to his removal from the courtroom. One notable incident occurred when he laughed during a witness testimony, revealing his true personality. Because that he was going to find her and he was going to kill her. <laughs> Returning to the courtroom, Brooks experienced another outburst, expressing his dissatisfaction with how the district attorney pronounced the word defendant. I would like to provide the defendant and the court. So that had to be that had to be said. The defendant. 
I got Bro, one ear that work and I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you. That no, it's you not. Ain't none of this to witness. benefit me. Seemingly frustrated, Brooks engaged in a stare down with the judge, highlighting his growing agitation. A break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. The jury swiftly reached a verdict, finding Brooks guilty on all 76 charges brought against him. As a result, he received six life sentences and an additional 700 plus years in prison. This is Bryce Rhodes, who is currently standing trial in Louisville, Kentucky, facing three counts of murder. The series of events began when Rhodes mistakenly shot and killed an innocent man, believing him to be someone else. Two brothers, age 16 and 14, who were witnesses to the initial crime, were also later killed by Rhodes. Close these kids alone. Oh, uh, they cool. We play basketball. I'm cool. A lot of people. Did you hang out with them on a regular basis? It was cool. Yeah, we hung out different times. You know, I need a lawyer, man. If you're gonna keep all of my. The trial has faced significant delays due to Rhodes' unpredictable and disruptive behavior. It started with him blowing kisses to individuals in the courtroom, including the victim's family members, followed by making hand gestures. Ma'am, ma'am, look at me, ma'am! Mr. Rhodes, you're smiling. I don't know why you're smiling. No, because I can. It's not a crime to smile. I would suggest right. you do what helps okay. you, not what hurts you. Okay, That's do what I want to do. Let's get that understood. At one point, Rhodes even had to wear a spit mask after spitting on his own attorney. Cheap shot. You a coward. Nice cheap shot. Excuse me. Excuse me. During another court appearance, Rhodes made bizarre accusations directed at the judge. I don't know if y'all got some type of sexual relationship going on. Are you some type of racist? Which one is it? Or are you just wrong in everything that you think about? Are you a secret Ku Klux Klan member? Given Rhodes's uncontrollable behavior in the courtroom and his dismissal of several lawyers, the trial has been prolonged far beyond the initially anticipated timeline. It is evident that Rhodes will not be released back into society anytime soon. The trial is still ongoing. This is Jacob Larson, who is currently facing a personal protection violation hearing. He stands accused of sending unwanted advances to a former high school acquaintance on Facebook, despite a restraining order previously filed against him by the same person. You know what? I told you to leave her alone, and apparently that didn't get through loud and clear. So today, you're going to jail for three days. And the next time you violate, you're going to jail for... You know what? You got a bad attitude. You had a bad attitude last time you were in court. Okay? You and her are buddy-buddy. Y'all get along. Y'all are... 45 days county jail. Okay. 93 days in the county jail. You want to go for a year? Oh, try it right The judge presiding over the case appears visibly irritated by the defendant's persistent defiance. Consequently, the judge orders Larson to be taken into custody and sent to jail. However, the situation doesn't end there. Larson adamantly refuses to be escorted out of the courtroom, prompting the judge to personally intervene in order to subdue him. As a result of his actions, Larson is ultimately sentenced to serve 93 days in the county jail. This is Mikael Hugenberg, a 34-year-old defendant who stands accused of assaulting a Campbell County deputy. As the jurors enter the court, Hugenberg, positioned at the back, promptly rises from his seat. Despite the officer's attempts to restrain him, he refuses to comply. In response to Hugenberg's non-compliance, a piercing shriek can be heard as he is tased by the officers. Consequently, he is forcefully removed from the courtroom and charged with an additional count of assault. Subsequently, Hugenberg is found guilty of both charges and is sentenced to 12 years in prison, taking into account his original offense. This is Sherry Flynn, a resident of Florida who is facing charges of felony battery and resisting arrest with violence. Represented by a public defender, the courtroom atmosphere quickly becomes tense right from the start. Have you ever been treated for any mental health issues? What you yourself first? I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> As a yourself. Okay, well, I'm a little busy right now. Initially finding the situation amusing, the judge's demeanor changes when Hey! 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 Hey!
Flynn is ultimately ordered to pay a dollar fifty fine and undergo a comprehensive psychiatric evaluation. This is Jesse Rose, a 25-year-old individual. As a former aspiring rugby player, Rose finds himself facing charges of reckless wounding and assault after an incident at a pub where he was intoxicated. He had thrown his drinking glass, striking a security guard on the head. His attorney argues his case, asserting that he has transformed his life, secured steady employment, and abandoned his previous reckless behavior. However, the judge is resolute in not granting leniency for such a severe assault. Consequently, Rose is sentenced to 14 months in prison, and his reaction is as follows. Expressing disgust at the received sentence, Rose unleashes his inner rugby player by forcefully kicking down the courtroom door. As the situation escalates, he proceeds to throw not one, but two chairs at the officers. Additional law enforcement personnel enter the courtroom, effectively subduing him and escorting him out of the premises. As a consequence of the disturbance caused, an extra eight months are added to his initial 14-month sentence. This is Jeremy Christian, who was convicted of the murder of two individuals in Portland, Oregon. Christian's violent outburst occurred on a crowded train when he launched into a racist tirade directed at two young women. Bystanders attempted to intervene to halt his behavior. Unfortunately, the situation escalated, resulting in Christian stabbing and killing two men and inflicting serious injuries on a third victim. Christian can be seen fleeing the scene, but train passengers pursued him leading to his arrest approximately one mile away. A glimpse of Christian's arrest can be observed with him inside the patrol car. Christian was subsequently found guilty on two counts of murder and attempted murder. During the sentencing, one of the victims delivered a victim impact statement, triggering an outburst from Christian. Following Christian's removal from the courtroom, the judge sentenced him to two consecutive life terms, plus an additional 25 years for his other convictions. This is Dale Roy Greenman, who was involved in a bond hearing for theft charges. Allegedly, Greenman entered a 7-Eleven store and took a pack of cigarettes, a lighter, and a Gatorade. However, when he reached the cashier, he simply walked out without making any payment. Prior to this incident, Greenman had faced a separate charge of tampering with evidence, which could potentially escalate his current misdemeanor charge to a felony. Upon hearing this information, Greenman immediately erupts into a 30-second rant. Horse, you do whatever the you want. Excuse me? My name is Mr. Greenman. I'm the federal witness of the United States federal government. I demand some respect, you Let's get a jam around with all y'all. As a result, Greenman is expelled from the courtroom and taken into custody, while his bond is increased from $250 to $1,000. This is Sean Riker, who was found guilty of approximately 16 crimes, including reckless endangerment and sexual assault of a child. Having already served a 12-year sentence in a federal prison for detonating pipe bombs, Riker arrives at court fully restrained and wearing a spit mask. However, his restraints do not deter him as he immediately targets Judge Wayne Merrick. Any idea, Merrick? Oh, you got me looking like a clown. Stupid 
Riker is forcibly removed from the court by heavily armed officers and subsequently sentenced to an astonishing 200 years in prison. Despite attempting to appeal the sentence, his appeal is denied. This is Bass Webb, who is facing charges of two counts of attempted murder in Lexington, Kentucky. In the surveillance footage, you can see Webb attempting to run over two jail employees at a facility where he had recently served time. During his first court appearance, the judge considers recusing herself from the trial due to her personal acquaintance with the two employees. However, before the judge can make her decision, Webb shocks the courtroom by spitting on her. The judge. The judge wipes off the spit and promptly removes Webb from the courtroom. It is revealed that Webb has a disturbing history, as he had previously been charged with the murder of two different girlfriends while in prison. He was convicted of killing the first girlfriend and is currently on trial for the second. During the trial, Webb showed no signs of remorse and the jury found him guilty. Consequently, the judge sentenced him to life in prison for his crimes. Webb had even arrived in court with a tattoo on his head, listing the names of people he wished to kill, with three rats crossed out at the bottom. Now, we move to Wichita, Kansas, for the sentencing of Michael Gaines, who has been found guilty of battery against a police officer. The judge addresses Gaines regarding his actions. You deliberately were hawking up I didn't hawk up no saliva, okay? That's and you're gonna believe those lies. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't hock up no saliva. You're gonna believe a lie because they wear in uniform. In an attempt to restore order, the judge intervenes. Eager. You ain't gotta scream at me. You, oh. you gonna raise your voice at me? Oh my God. Raise your voice at me, I raise my voice at you. You just in a row. After enduring a series of insults, Michael Gaines is gently escorted out of the courtroom and the judge pronounces a sentence of 13 years. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Watch this next.